dear students having completed the topic on endorsement we will now start with the third unit which talks about banking operations the focus here will be collecting banker paying banker and also the lending operations of banks today in this lecture we will be covering uh, will be focusing on collecting banker initially I will be covering a few terms and then we'll be covering the important questions that could be asked for, asked under the topic of collecting banker. So to start off, I'm in slide two. Here you can see the generic check cycle. So let's uh, start off with an example. Let's assume Ram has an account with HDFC bank and he issues a check to Sham. Sham in turn has an account with ICICI bank. So what he does, he goes and deposits that check given by Ram there. In this case, Ram gives a check. He is a drawer of the check. So Ram is called the drawer. Sham is the person to whom the check is given. I mean, he is the beneficiary here. So he becomes the payee. So Ram is the drawer and Sham is the payee. HDFC bank you know, is Ram's bank. So it becomes the payment has to go from this particular bank. So HDFC bank in this case becomes the drawee. Okay. And ICICI bank, which helps Sham collect the payment from HDFC bank is the collecting bank or the payee bank. Okay. The cycle is Ram gives a check to Sham. So, drawer gives a check to payee, payee in turn submits the check in payee's bank and uh, through the electronic clearing system, the intimation notification goes to the drawee bank or the drawer's bank. HDFC bank is also called the drawee, no? And once the payment is settled, uh, once the payment is, uh, so HDFC bank also becomes a paying bank in this case. So this is the generic check cycle. Now moving on to understand some other terms. Um, I mean, who is a holder? So there are three terms related to holder. One is holder, holder for value, and then holder in due course. These are used very frequently in many of the legal definitions that they give for uh, you know banks and uh, generally used in Negotiable Instruments Act. So who is a holder? So while you can, I have the definition that is given in the Negotiable Instruments Act that I have given in the uh, presentation as well. The golden rule to identify a holder is that a holder is a person who is entitled to the position of the instrument in his own name. Okay, so he is entitled to the position of instrument and he is also entitled to recover or receive payment using that instrument. So two golden rules entitled to the position of instrument and to recover payment from the instrument. I will give you an example. Mr. X gave a salary check to Mr. Y at the end of the month. So here Mr. X is what? He is the drawer. Mr. Y is the pay. Huh? This is from our previous example. So he gave a salary check to Mr. Y at the end of the month. So the check is in the name of Mr. Y. So he is entitled to the position of the instrument. And he can also, Mr. Y can also recover money using this check. He can deposit this check and collect cash, right? So he is a holder, legal holder. Okay. Let's move on to the next term that is called holder for value. Okay. Holder for value is a person who is a holder. That means the first two conditions are satisfied. He is entitled to the position of the instrument and he is entitled to recover payment. But the additional condition here is that he must have got this in exchange for something of value or in exchange for something of consideration. That is, he must have delivered something or, you know, uh, he, is pro he must have promised to provide some value 
to the person issuing the check or giving him the payment. So in this case, Mr. X gave a salary check to Mr. Y because he has performed, he has delivered work for one entire month. So at the end of the month only he is getting the check. No? So Mr. Y also becomes the holder for value. Okay. But supposing Mr. X gave a gift check to you know one of his relatives does his relative become a holder yes he does because he is entitled to possession of the instrument it is in his name mr x has given to his relative it is in the relative's name so yes and also he can deposit the check and get the payment so he is a holder but is mr x's relative holder for value no because he has not delivered anything it's a gift check so he is not a holder for value so let's move on to the third uh, definition which is called holder in due course holder in due course again is a holder so those two conditions are definitely satisfied that is he gets the negotiable instrument entitlement is in his name and plus he can recover payment he also becomes a holder for consideration that is he must have done something he must have given some value or uh, delivered something or you know given uh, you know in case of uh, you know purchase in credit or something sale in credit or something he must have delivered the goods or something like that okay but there are two additional conditions that uh, are important here for a holder to be holder in due course he must have obtained the instrument before the maturity date so in our example of mr x and mr y he gets the check at the end of the month and it is uh, let's assume for the work done in january he gets the check in february dated 5th of feb so it is like before mature, uh, maturity date, Mr. Y is getting the check. So that condition is satisfied. And then he must also, that is the receiver, must also have obtained it in good faith. That is, Mr. Y has no reason to think that Mr. X would have done some fraud or, you know, something must have gone wrong, you know, prior to him getting the check. So that is getting in good faith. So holder in due course, for holder in due course, the golden rules are he needs to be a holder. The person has to get the negotiable instrument for a consideration or for a value that he has delivered as a reward or payment. And it must be before maturity date and good faith. So you will see this term good faith in many places. Good faith is honestly you know, genuinely believing in the, uh, you know, a dealing, okay. So, this is holder in due course. Please understand, the holder in due course has the maximum amount of rights amongst these three categories of holders. So, he can, so we studied about endorsement. So, endorsement can happen across multiple levels. So, in case something goes wrong or some fraud happens in the chain of endorsements, the holder in due course can sue all the people who are part of the endorsement chain. Or he can sue anyone or all the people. So, that is the right he has. This is not the same right that the holder for value has or the holder has. Okay. Um, the other... Um, term that we need to discuss is payment in due course so payment in due course is from the point of view of uh, the person who is actually making the payment okay so payment in due course means as per the definition in accordance with the apparent tenor of the instrument so this term apparent tenor means as per the directions or instructions given in the instrument so if somebody in the bank counter is going to make the payment against a check 
he has to make the payment as per the instructions given on the check so if it is a cross check it has to go into the bank account if it is the if it is a bearer check it uh, cash has to be handed over if it is a order check uh, verification of the person who has submitted the check has to be made so and uh, other checks uh, have to be ma made like uh, the date and signature and other things so payment has to be made in payment has to be made in accordance with the apparent tenor of the instrument it is called and in good faith without negligence that is on at the counter when the person is making the payment he genuinely believes that the other party is the party who deserves the payment he has done whatever usual checks that he usually has to do and he has tried to be as careful as possible before handing over the payment so in good faith without negligence so these are very important uh, you know conditions when we say that the payment has happened in due course so in accordance with apparent tenor in good faith without negligence and there is no reason for him to believe that the other party has done something wrong or you know it is like um, you know he is a fraud or whatever so he genuinely believes he deserves the payment and he makes the payment after due checks are done okay so this is called payment in due course okay students uh, we will study more about uh, collecting banker in the second part of this lecture